Okay, boys and girls, here we are. It is, uh, <laughs> it's March something. What is it? March 6th, 7th? I don't even know what date it is. Uh, March 6th. 6th. I got it March right. 6th. Okay, good. And uh, welcome, everybody. We've got 17 already in here. Harrison, 360 grad, Pixel 5, Ben Barden, joking. Uh, we've got Jago. Baron. Jago's here. Jago's here. We can start now. Uh, we've got Digital Filmmaker. Uh, did I say I said Pixel 5? We've got Memo, Guillermo Montesinos. And uh, so we got some of our cast of characters already hanging out. And welcome to another um 18. episode eight is it 18 should be very nice 18 I think it I might even be 19 i'm still pretty sure we have a double number in there somewhere yeah oh, well no it does it says episode 19. Mm. no i, I have it like somewhere further back i think we did like two eight well then maybe this is 20 because it maybe. says 19 on my title yeah. uh caleb's coming over in a minute this is the pre-flash show everybody say hello to ben ben waving uh from from the Czech Republic, oh. and uh, he has a glass that should have beer in it, but it has water or nothing. It does. What's in it? At the moment, it's water. Or it might be vodka. You never know. All right, good. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I can't do vodka. Hey, Game Spotlight TV Live. That is a hell of a name. Uh, welcome to Cameron Flask, and thank you for coming mm -hmm. over from Caleb's channel. Uh, Travis in the house, Matt in the house, Decon in the house, Michael is here hanging out, uh, old timer. And I mean that in the, in the kindest way, because I'm an old timer. So, you know, join the old fart club. Here you are. <laughs> I'm not that uh, far behind you. Yeah, we well, you'll get there, you know, and then we got Damien <laughs> coming in clay. We've got high C films. I'm feeling love. I'm seeing emojis. It's exactly <laughs> what we're looking for. Vodka. I mean, Brad, Brian, oh my God, they're just, uh, I, I, everybody's coming over from uh, Caleb's <laughs> oh, live and, stream. And he did a public Dan, today. got to say, a belated 30th, happy 30th birthday to Dan Moore. Yes. 30 last week. Happy Honestly, birthday. I can't believe he's only 30. He's had a hard paper around that boy. Yep. And we got Caleb coming over in a minute. And, um, and then we got Virginia, Nolan from Virginia, Matt, proud member of the old fart club here. Very nice. Fart 51. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Memo. Uh, there we go. D Tech Logic, Lab Rap Productions, Jason. Uh, and then, wow, this cheeky. We are all cheeky. Good. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, sure, Dan is sturdy. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, not based on the things that he talks about every week. No. But we got, This is nice. We got a nice group of people here. Uh, I'd like to welcome Lenzy. everybody. If you're new to Cameron Flask, we do this every week at 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5 p.m. Central, and midnight, at the stroke of midnight in the Czech Republic, which is where Ben Barden is. And you'll see little old me because I just want everybody to see that beautiful mug over there. And, uh, <laughs> and there it is. That's a nice kitchen you built there, uh, Ben. It's really lovely, actually. Yeah, that's all That's all, Yindra. That's not yeah, – I yeah, have an awful lot nice. to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Two, I did this. Nice tulips out. I love it. Tulips are, uh, I like tulips. They're good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's almost like it was all planned, but. Yeah. It's Hell of a lot better than roses. Time. It does. It looks good. Uh, we've got D-Tech Logic, Donald Taylor II. <laughs> it's been uh, too Lee long. Ben. It's been a decent resolution. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I know. <laughs> I'm at home and, and mobile. Dale. <laughs> uh, Mustafa, we've got a. Mahmoud, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got a great group of people here. Okay, so here we are. So th this is the pre-flash show, and this is kind of where we just kind of chat, see who's arriving and what's going on. Um, I posted an episode today, and... Um, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it, it's, you know, you never know, and I didn't have a lot of time to put it together, but uh, going to Red Rock Canyon Conservation was just amazing, and... Mm -hmm. um, uh, you don't get to do that every day, at least on the production. I mean, you can fly into Vegas and you can drive over and pay, you know, 10, 15, 20 bucks and go in there. But to actually have the opportunity to go in with a crew and with a real drone and actually get to fly around, you know, this is what mm. makes us big boys with our toys. Uh, so it was fun. Yeah. It looked, it looked great. Shiz. We got Shiz here. I, I had to say it twice. Sorry. Uh, Michael. 
Brian, and then and we there have Caleb. Ah, uh, the golden boy. Hey, 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 there hey. he is. I'm excited. Here I we am you. We're getting really close. By the way, everybody, we are less than a month from when uh, we're all going to be in Las Vegas for NAB. And I am super mm -hmm. excited. I am super bummed, by the way, that they're mm -hmm. moving it back a day next year. So uh, this is news as of today or yesterday. The show starts on Sunday and goes through Wednesday. Oh, snap. And, oh, dip. Um, that doesn't really matter for most people. But I kind of like to get the workshops done by Sunday and then just have all the time to hang out. So that's like mm. a big change for 2020. But apparently a lot of people have been asking for this. Interesting. Um, Daniel Moore Photography is asking, what's my favorite bodice lens from the shoot? Daniel, first and foremost, you just got to know it's always about the 40 for me. If it's full frame, it's the 40. If it's crop, it's 27. It's that angle of view. That's my favorite. So there you go. But if you want to make people look brutal, then you put a, a, an 85 or a 135 on there and uh, shoot wide open. There you go. That's what I got for you. <laughs> what have you been up to? Shiz. Oh, Change it is. Am I, am I too loud, by the way? I'm going to turn myself up just a little bit. No, check, you're not check, too check. loud. No, no, okay. don't turn yourself up. You were fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, Shiz changed his name. It used to be yeah. something else. It was shiz in there though. Shiz, yeah. Shiz box oh. or shiz? Shiz nuts. Shiz what nuts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nope. Larry. I missed it a little bit. I'm not going to hey, lie. Larry, I put out a couple of calls for help out in Vegas, meaning if somebody wanted to hang out and have a drink. I mean, I had some of my buds there from production, but you didn't answer the call on the on the tweets. Oh, are we going to get the close up, Caleb? Oh, no. You're oh, no. I'm still the drink. A little bit. <sighs> not yet, Jim. Mm. Got to save it. <sighs> the, re the reveal it's nearly it's that time nearly that yeah. time uh yeah it was sh shniz shnizzle schnizzle nuts um sky welcome again gregory oh we got a group here this is good this we're is great right. we're double right. eights double digits and it's time to chat it's not the four thousand people that caleb just had oh, on his stop public it. live stream but you know we can't all be the golden child with the golden <laughs> ticket with the willy wonka and the chocolate factory so it's okay I can't wait to Lotus as I am. It's going to be so. Fun. It's going to be really good. Uh, I'm it still is. trying to get Dan. I'm still trying to get Dan to come. He's still trying to work it out. I would. Oh, love, he's got to come. He has to. Oh, for goodness' sake! All right. Well, here we are. Two fifty nine. Oh my god! Amazing. Okay. Loving the kitchen there, Bar uh, Ben. That's what I was saying. Look at it. I mean, it's Thanks. really Look, our tulips. kitchens have like identical color schemes. Really, white and gray. Right, like did your wife choose it or did you choose it? Uh, well, wife and I, we were allergic yeah, to color. On. Wait, hello. We're white and gray too. That's really? our kitchen. Yeah. White, gray, and black. Unbelievable. Hmm. Amazing. Mm. There you go. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll Thank you. Um, hope the kid with flask drink can help his throat more than the water. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we might, we might kill, uh, we might, we might hit a hundred today. Let's get some more people over here. Oh, oh just lost you know what? Let me, uh, I forgot to tweet it. Sky said, uh, nice leading lines on your neck, uh, Ben. And that's true. Oh, yeah. You do have some Brilliant. nice leading lines. And his head. Yeah. Everything's, every, all corners, all lines lead to Ben's. He did. Now we just need to put in like a nice that's little straight. soft side key. You're looking, I like this kitchen thing. It, it suits you. Well, it's and nice because every every week until now, I've been using my desktop PC and the capture yeah. card on that. Yeah. And I'm here, but I finally bought the cam link this week. No one had it in stock in Europe. I finally got one. Did, the 4K. Did you get the 4K? Can you can't oh, you get can. it anywhere in Europe. It's like a. So you're forced for 30. Time. Yeah, mine's yeah. in the drawer now. I got the the 4K because you can do 24. Can you bring those tulips closer to you? I really would like to see those. Those look lovely. You want to bring it? Yeah. 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 How, how's should, that? Is what, that good? What should uh, we rotate do? Clockwise. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jesus Christ. What should we do woof. if uh, we woof, hit 100? Woof. I feel like we should get weird and do something crazy. Not okay. too crazy. Just well, are you happy yeah. with the are you happy with the flowers now, Jim? Can Love we carry it. on? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what were you saying about 100? Get nuts. Oh yeah, we're at 94. Uh -huh. Here we go. Hey, oh snap! I'm scared now. We oh, haven't yeah. recommended anything, but I'm still scared. Okay, good. Well, we're officially in at 302, so I'm going to start okay. the show. Boom. And then we'll see what happens with uh, with your with your post 
uh, golden one, and we'll see where we go. So uh, welcome, everybody, to Cameron Flask, episode 19. Uh, we keep this going every Wednesday on the C47 YouTube channel. It happens at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern, and at the stroke of midnight in the lovely Czech Republic in a small hamlet of a town where people drink exorbitant amounts of alcohol all of the time and children start drinking at the age of 16. Oh, mine have started all at 16. No, earlier than that. I'm not trying to get myself in trouble here. I'm just kidding. Okay. So uh, here we are at the show and, uh, and I'm here with my partners in crime. Each week we have somebody who hosts the show. So kind of drives the content this week. It's me next week. It'll be Ben. And the week after that, it will be Caleb. And then we just go around. So, um, uh, let's do introductions here, and uh, I'm Jem Schofield from the C47, and I do production, and you can watch other videos. I drop one every Wednesday at uh, noon Eastern time, and it's called Gearbox, and I'm going to go over to uh, the furthest of our friends, Mr. Ben Barden. Can you introduce yourself and what you do and all that fun stuff? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Ben Barden. I'm a photographer, filmmaker. Uh, sometimes DP, sometimes director, sometimes producer, and I work mainly in the UK, but kind of all over the place, really, all over Europe at the moment, traveling quite a lot, and tonight I'm in the Czech Republic where I live, in my kitchen. Awesome. Good. Yeah. And then we've got over in central part of the United States, the other gentleman in our crew. 99, folks. One away. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, 101. Oh, there we Boom. go. There Sweet it is. Shot. Sweet All right. Shot. Uh, apparently, Amazing. you need to uh, shave your head, Ben. That's what the people want. There we is go. That <laughs> it? It's either I've got to shave my head or you've got to grow a beard. I think those okay. are the two things that okay. people need to be asking for. <laughs> got it. I don't, have, I don't have either of those problems, so I'm okay. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so we're down to 98 once they saw that. <laughs> oh my god, unbelievable! <laughs> Good stuff. So, yeah, I'm here, I made it, and uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for part one of this. Yeah, you need no introduction. Uh, but speaking of introductions, Mr. Caleb Pike, uh, uh -oh. DSLR video shooter, can you please tell us what you're drinking today? Oh boy, okay, so we got to do this all proper. Like, it's a thing now. Here we go. <laughs> Inbox Rip. Media Chicago said 50 of those viewers are Ben's mom. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to go. Oh, <laughs> We're oh back to 102. Are, wow. are, you, are you drinking a big glass of Bocalicious today? Un I, I am. Unfortunately, I, it's a, I don't have the bottle anymore. I got mm -hmm. tired of looking at it, so I put it in a decanter. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. So, Very nice. Uh, this week, we are uh, having some uh, Johnny Walker Black. Okay. Which, we'll smoke to it. Yeah, eh, it's not my favorite. It's if I'm honest, okay. Yeah. it's okay. It's okay, but it's not. It's not speaking to me. So okay. I'm still on the hunt for that blend. So you guys need to tell me what what's what's the blend, the good blends. Okay. Oh, I nearly I nearly bought one in the airport last week on Friday, but I had both my kids with me and all their bags, and because my daughter's arms in a sling, I didn't have right. room to carry it. But there were there, there's one called the Lakes, which is really good, and I'm not sure if that's available in the state and then there's my cheapy one that i buy regularly which i haven't managed to buy this week so i'm kind of having to improvise a bit with the drinks this time okay <laughs> that sounds good it would you like a siphon annoyed. for that would you like uh oh my goodness and ben what are you having to drink today okay so as i've just mentioned we're running short on booze and i need to go and do do a whiskey trip so, so every every time he says this okay go i know ahead. i know i know <laughs> but this time i'm i'm really i feel like caleb's kind of gotten up in the credibility stakes on the drinks and i'm uh -oh, kind of ben. i'm yeah i'm on the way down however don't so worry i'm, I'm working on my accent a glass of ice you. a glass of ice they're actually it's frozen vodka oh what's this the, now this Mm. This is a kind of rummy kind of drink, but it's more sickly and sweet and syrupy than a you, standard you, rum. You you had and, me at sickly and syrupy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, no, but I'm going to do something good with it. Hang on. This 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 also is pretty special because I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully the autofocus will kick in and you can you can mm. you, you, you yes. see that's my that's that's me. Oh, my God. It is you. So you can't mm -hmm. shave. 
Because he has no, a beard the, and he has hair, so you can't. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, there goes that idea. This, this is it. This is a. It's a Czech brand. It's called Che Guevara, and they have my my face on the front of the bottle. Bart, yeah. good to see you. Okay, so sickly so, and what, sweet. Yes, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I've invented this cocktail when I was drunk the other week. Right. Oh, this is great. So this is this kind of weird sickly rum stuff yeah. called Czech. So this is this is called a Chelk. Okay. Yeah. Chelk. Chelk. This is milk. This is milk. Oh, this is sickly oh, rum. Oh my god! Where's the bathroom? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Honestly, I know what milk? you're thinking. This is amazing. This is. It's called. It's called a chalk. It's home. <laughs> I, came I don't this like middle. this. I if don't I had, like if it. If I if I drank that, I'd be sick for a week and a half. By the way, it's okay, fine. It's, okay, <laughs> what are you drinking, Jen? Something milk based? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not even close. Uh, so Dale. apparently uh, I've drank a lot of Pinot Noir here in, in Oregon because that is uh, a lot of what they have. But the Pinot starts to get expensive because, you know, good Pinot Noir is not cheap. Uh, and I'm drinking wine later. So uh, unlike almost every week where I drink scotch, I'm actually going to have wine. Um, and I've been looking for some affordable and I haven't had this yet. Well, I don't even know where that. Oh, there we go. This is it. It's French. It's a Syrah and a Grenache. Um, I, I, I favor Grenaches. I like them. I like Malbecs as well. Uh, so I'm going to give this a shot. And uh, that's all I got for you. I mean, it's a red wine. And there it is. It sounded like the Godfather scene right there. And I actually forgot my, uh, my glass. So I'm going to get up for a second. And Caleb, I'm going to have you uh, just do a song and a dance for 30 less seconds and then i'm going to come back and pour my wine and we're going to say cheers jeez man unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable okay. you just, just use the bottle here he is caleb oh boy okay <laughs> so ben mm. how are you and uh good oh, there he is I'm wow good. lightning that speed that, wasn't it? that was impressive you didn't have to fill it anything fun in the chat i see lots of fun stuff in the chat everybody's uh cheers is coming to prague to visit you gotta stop off at part of it on the way on the train Okay. From Vienna to Prague, that's kind of right next to where I live. I'm a horrible host. I'm back. There he okay, is. Here, here we go. All right, kids. So here we go. Let's do some cheers All right. to everybody here and to uh, 104. 104. Are good. Wow. Uh, nice everybody, nice. thank you for it's joining sick, us. Sickly and sweet. Here we go. Um, cheers. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Interesting. Mm. Okay, so there we go. It's right. What's everybody else drinking? Do we have anybody else saying some stuff? I had a Talisker come we up. We have some wine. We have some port. We have very nice. What else did I miss? Decon has a water bottle. Oh, <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Jago. What are you drinking? Mm. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I like this. This is kind of nasty. It, no, it's not nasty. It just give a little. Let it breathe a minute. Let yeah, it you got to give it a moment. Yeah, yeah. Let's, give a, little, let's it. give a little time. Yeah, I, maybe, maybe I won't. You know. Okay. Nice. Okay. All right. My tummy's have, warm. I'm sour ready. monkey. Okay, so I'm a uh, champagne fancy pants. Nice. Okay, there we go. Fancy pants revolution. Yeah. Okay, so we are here and uh, show 19, how we rig our cameras, camera and flask. Uh, this is going to kind of be a round robin, and we want everybody who's in the chat to jump in, as always. We welcome you to ask questions. You can always go to the c47.com forward slash contact and put questions in before each week's show as well. Um, everything's for, uh, for uh, I don't know what I would say. It's up for grabs, anything, whatever you want to talk about. We're, we're here for that uh, within reason. So mm -hmm. you can't say you're having a 12-year single malt, Master Stroke Media. You have to tell us what 12-year single malt. That is important to know because we want to be able to try it if we are so in the mood. Okay, so here we go. Uh, how we rig our cameras. So I think, you know, Caleb and I were talking about this a little bit, right, Caleb? Yep. And we don't want this to just be about, okay, you're, you know, putting a monstrous rig around your camera. We're talking about camera support, um, and that can include many categories. And I think it's also going to open up the discussion in terms of what type of um, equipment we may use on a regular basis, what type of camera support 
uh, and rigs we have used in the past and maybe things that have also fallen out of favor for us, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and why maybe that is the case, depending on how we shoot and what we do. So I think I'm going to start off with uh, Ben here because, Ben, you're really in many ways one of, the, I think, the most interesting of the three of us because you go out very oftentimes as completely and utterly just you onto oil yes. rigs into these remote locations. And yes. I'm really interested in, uh, A, what camera systems you're using and how you're dealing with rigging those cameras when you're holding the camera, but also in situations where you're in adverse weather conditions and stuff like that. So maybe talk about some okay. of that stuff if that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I just switched camera systems recently. I was using the FS700 as my main camera for a long time, which I still like, and I still like the image off it with an external recorder. But what I hate about that is having to use an external recorder. And mm. all the stuff that you then need to rig that out to make that work. So it's weight. It's a pain in terms of having to get arms for the monitor. You're smashing it on things. So when you're on an oil rig job, as you've mentioned, I'm often wandering around with the camera on sticks over my shoulder. You've got to have one hand free for sort of health and safety stuff. You've got to be on handrails. And just that thing will get hit all the time, or you then having to put it in a bag, move to the next location, build it up again. So when I moved over to the C200, the main reason that I did that, and this is a bit like the plugins last week, was to really stop rigging it out. Mm -hmm. You know, we, most of all three of us last week with the plugins thing, and we were saying that really we've reduced that. And for me, the C200 was a decision to, that was made an awful lot to do with not having to take external monitors, not having to rig it up so much, and certainly the batteries, because that was the other thing of having to use an external monitor system. It's just mm -hmm. the amount of batteries those things chew through is huge. Whereas two decent sized batteries on this camera all day long, no problem. So that was the main thing. At the moment, for a B-cam, I'm probably going to go EOS R next week, I think. That's a good deal on it and trade-ins and things. And in terms of the way I've rigged the C200 up, the only thing I've really changed, and I can't show it right now because I'm using it to film me, but mm. I bought the small rig uh, monitor bracket, which mm. is much easier. So the original monitor bracket for this thing, which needs all kinds of, like, it's all this. And they're not all captive them, screws. They're a pain. No, the they're ends. not captive screws. They fall out, and you need That's to have an Allen key. You so need stupid. an Allen key to attach like this to this, and then this goes on here. Mm -hmm. And this is all stupid. So the small rig thing, it's all just there's a NATO rail for the for, for the monitor that stays on it. The whole thing now fits in a tiny little pouch. So the amount of stuff I need to carry around is smaller again. And to rig it, it's completely toolless now. Mm -hmm. On the handle, the little small rig bracket sits on with the the rod. Perfect. That's really easy. It was, I can't remember how much it was, 100 not even $60, $70, something like that. Cheap, cheap. And that's really all I have. I have that straight onto my Miller DS10 and the, uh, the Carbon Solo sticks. And that's really it. So on those jobs as well for the next one, and I'm about to do another uh, maybe next week, and we've just been talking with um the client for that and they want the load of um slider shots for the next one so i'm now looking at and we were talking about this last week getting a slider which i can take on one set rig so i'm looking at a system that can sit with the slider between the sticks and the head mm. that i can use in a in a conventional way and i can mm. do and i'm thinking just like a small 40 centimeter i don't know what that is 12 inches something like that small amount of movement just enough but i don't want to be having to rig stuff because it's a pain and i'm often 10 15 minutes walk from where i started mm. and i can't go back and i can't i have no one to help me carry stuff mm. and i have to have one hand free all the time so you're very do you, limited do you ever use monopods yes i okay. do um not on i haven't done on rigs so much but yes mm. i do certainly um and then handheld Another reason why I really like the C200 and why I went for it was because I actually really like hand holding that in the same way that you would with an SLR. So hand under mm -hmm. lens, mm -hmm. eyepiece up, the grip's really good on that. You're bracing it against your face and using these um, 17 to 55, which isn't weather sealed, 
Um, mm. But otherwise, it is I think the perfect match for that camera. The sure. AF's great. It's got yeah. image stabilization on it. It's really sharp. Sharp uh, as a mother. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's great and and dirt cheap. So that is that's the the general setup. And then I have a a mirrorless camera with me. So at the moment, I'm still on the uh, the seven R two. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that I do for this for rigging up, because I don't tend to do sound if I'm using this one, is that I have, this is a small rig, cut in. it's an L bracket, but I only use the bottom section of it, which is mm. five millimeters thick, and that's mm-hmm. got an ARCA slot on it. So mm-hmm. then I use things like uh, these little ARCA plates, if this will come off. There's that little vel- Velbin plate, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I have head, that baby. Here. So we we talked about this, and so I take this as a spare, and also I've I've t- travelled with this a bit, dirt cheap, and this was a set of cheap carbon legs that I bought after NAB in some camera store in Vegas one year about mm. eight years ago, called the ProMaster, which is oh yeah, two hundred dollars. Yeah, I know ProMaster. Yeah, it's a big uh, big photo brand. ProMaster. Okay. Okay. I'd never yeah. heard of it. I don't think they distribute yeah. in Europe, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so that. On those and then just using these arca things but at the moment i'm wanting to move everything over to an arca system which i had and then moving over to the c200 it's just finding a system the um the kessler mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. clamp which that is, is amazing that, man yeah Thank but you. no and well i watched your video when i was sort of researching oh. stuff your video came up which was massively useful so thank you for that and the, <laughs> the but the no one in Europe is selling that. No one seems to have it in stock. Mm. And the only place that does is selling it at get this two hundred and twenty pounds. So that's like knocking on three hundred dollars, which mm. I think is a little rich. Mm. I think when you reviewed it, it was at one hundred and twenty dollars, which is fine. Mm. So Interesting. yeah, any other any other options? But then everything's on an Arca system. The uh, when I end up with the slider, the short slider, that will all be on Arca. So everything will just be very quick on and off. Yeah, already has some solid Arca stuff now, right? It's not Kessler. That thing is the Kessler thing is outrageously good, but yeah, they're I building. Think, yeah, I don't know. They're building Arca into a lot of their rigs, but they're building it for those rigs on a sideways yeah. thing. So if Boom. you're not looking at multiple cameras, you have to then mount this. Well, that no, way around. I yeah. so got you right now, Ben. I so got you. I'm dropping it in the chat, and I'll drop yeah. it in our little private chatty chat chat. Okay, okay good. Cool. This is Same like Kessler level. Level like beast mode plate, Arca Swiss, okay. lever side lever. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the reviews. It's like of a that complete that, rip off. But the reviews I've seen on Amazon of that uh, were saying that it wasn't gripping very well, and then mm. it kept it kept slipping, mm. and that you were needing to readjust it all the time. It looks amazing and it looks the same, but the reviews I uh, read. Have you, have you used it or have you? No, have you just, no. I just um, know they had. I'll have to try it. I'm a big fan of their stuff, so I'm hoping it works. And I may just buy it because it's about sixty dollars. And they do a specific Arca plate, the C200, which is kind of wider than most of them. Okay. So it would it would suit me very nicely. But yeah, so that's nice. more or less I would think. Into and the only other thing that I was using, which I'm not now for the reasons we have already discussed, is that I when I was rigging the C200 out. And I was needing to take things on and off it all the time. So I was wondering around, not the C200, so the FS, was using uh, some of the, the triad orbit quick release stuff that I just have that on yeah. the, on the uh, recorder. So I'd have that on the Shogun. Yeah. And then I'd have this mounted on top of the camera. And you can also put the mic uh, shock mount on one side, this on the other. And that yeah. all just then is a quick snap in. That's handy. Yeah, that was really useful. That did work well. It did speed things up. Hmm. Uh, but no longer necessary and it all adds bulk and again with the base plates for stuff that that small rig do for the c200 specifically it's quite big and it allows you to put rails on so it's Mm. something similar to oh i had it here a minute ago yeah similar to this thing but the problem with that is that that adds quite a lot of bulk to the bottom and it no longer fits inside my little carry-on Bag. I have th- I have that piece. I think everybody has that piece in there. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It, yeah. I mean, it really can be handy. There's times yeah. that, that that has gotten me out of a pinch where I just oh, need yeah. to get some rods off of a camera, and uh, that is definitely a little piece that you need to have in there. Small so rig, the, dude. Absolutely. So the, the only thing that I'm missing now, and no one seems to make it, 
is the, the shock mount for the C200 works really nicely when you put it, because it has two positions. You can put it on the stupid monitor mount, Right. But you can also stick it further back on the body on the right side, which That's right. actually works really nicely. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that to take that, I have to take it off to fit it in my bag for when I'm flying. And it's screws, little screws, which I are know. very easy to lose. <sighs> I mean, I haven't lost them yet. Let's but, not talk about it. Right. There no. needs to be some quick, quick release thing for mm -hmm. this. Small rig, make me something. You could probably contact them and they could make a little plate to adapt that or whatever. Yeah. That's all Is there any way to... to... There's no additional height. You can do that with small rig. They, they kind of co-design with people that yeah. exactly have these problems. Uh, so Furworks, are you in here? There's a guy in our members that he's actually done stuff for them. Like oh, designed really? stuff for them and then they made it. So... There you go. The, nice. The, the, I think one of the issues that I have sometimes with the with these rigs, and this is the one that I'm using for the um, for the XT3 now, is mm. that it does have an Arca Swiss here. But when you put that obviously onto a video head, unless you put another plate here, then obviously mm. the camera is like this. Mm. Right. So I'd love them to have a little recess in here where yep. there's still the Arca Swiss and it could just slide in. Right. Um, that's the kind of pain in the ass about. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, in theory, that's fantastic if I'm on a photo head. But yeah. if I'm on a video head, then you're going to have to plate that sucker anyway. Um, yeah, they're kind, of, they're kind of doing that with some of their new, new, new stuff. Like okay. uh, uh, the F or the Z6 cages and stuff. They've got this one that has a built-in Arca Swiss. And in fact, the camera can slot out with an Arca Swiss on the camera. So you can quickly mm. remove from the cage. That's cool. But it's still mm. kind of Gen 1. So it, they're just going to get better and better. It's amazing how much better they've gotten. Oh, Kevin. Exactly. It does. I was having this conversation with some. Actually, I was talking to Jeff. Let's about repeat it. it. Yeah, yeah. Ago. So it says that the C200 bottom is not flush and terribly designed. It wobbles when mounted on any base plates. Now, I'm hoping that the small rig one, which also uses the two wider, um, quarter, I, can't remember, I think they're quarter 20 holes. That then it's mounted in four positions and what it really needs is a mount further back because it's held in a very small area at the front and mm. i've had the same thing on the miller when i was offshore and it was it was very very windy but mm. the camera was kind of fluttering it's been an issue with the cinema eos cameras uh from the get-go so uh i remember that one of the things that i used to have to do when using uh, you know, the long one Frodo plates is they have a little bit of rubber that comes up mm. the top and I would actually take the rubber off of the plate and then I would use uh, a three eighths and a quarter 20. And it was just where that plate was sitting would be the difference between having a little bit of a wobble or getting rid of the wobble. But it is, uh, it is definitely a, a little bit of an issue with the cinema EOS cameras. Mm. Um, Mr. Caleb, we move on to you, Mr. Studio Guru. And, um, you know, we've kind of started to talk about how you're approaching things, but, um, can you talk a little bit about what you used to use and then sort of how you have evolved in terms of what you're using for your cameras and, and also just cause you recommend so much, you have camera guides and things like that. You're mm. trying things out. So what, what are your kind of thoughts on where we sit right now in this space? Well, it definitely in the past was way back was a or 10 years ago or so was a big like shoulder rig guy, you know, by the Red Rock fully kitted, whatever, which was like a couple handles, a crappy shoulder pad and two rods for like eight hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars or whatever it was, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, I think a passion of mine has always been the compact cinema camera. Like I've always loved the idea of like the red, you know, it's this box with a handle and the way that's just the monitors right there. The, the, but then I've always talked about these smaller mirrorless or DSLRs, which are not that at all. So, yeah. um, the struggle for me has always been monitoring. If it doesn't have a good monitoring setup power, mm -hmm. uh, and then making all that work and cables and stuff. So, um, so cameras like the Confinity, um, to see any of the Canon line, the FS5, that's like what I love. Oh, audio, that's a whole other thing you got to figure out. So now that we've getting, been getting really solid mirrorless stuff, and a lot of people think like, dude, why don't you just buy a cinema camera? 
like I can't <laughs> I can't afford to cover <laughs> like every cinema camera that comes out. Uh, and I think it's really exciting what's happening with the especially now what's happening yeah. with the small form factor stuff. Yep. Because someday you'll have a you know a C. What's the full frame C? Oh, 700? seven hundred. from Canon. Yeah, yeah but it'll be yeah. <laughs> it'll be a little, boop, little box. Yeah. Um. So if you go back to my early videos, there's even some where I'm trying to take a five D and make it like a small cinema camera setup. So I've given up pretty much shoulder rigs, uh, monopods. That's how I lived when I did the was doing corporate work for all B-roll. I had that monopod that everyone had, the Minfrotto. What is it? The f oh, man. I've got it on a, on a wall in the other room. You know what I'm talking about? The one everyone had. The head only tilted, and it had the feet with the ball and the little feet at the bottom. Uh -huh. I, I didn't have nobody. That. Like Wait, explain this, Caleb. Chat, Wait, what is it? What is it? A Manfrotto monopod. Um, monopod. Yes. Like the Manfrotto monopod that everyone had in 2012. Oh, I have that. Yeah. With the little foot with the ball in it and it yeah, rotated. Yeah, yeah. You would stay standing in the middle. I have. I have. Bless you. Nice. Thank you. I, excuse me. Can I wait? Can I just acknowledge the fact that Caleb is a true professional? He he muted before he sneezed. I mean, that is just, oh my God, you have learned well. It is unbelievable. Okay. So I have, uh, I, I, you know, there's moments. We have moments. And that was a moment. That was. There you go. That was next level. So um, I have. Digital filmmaker a, to the rescue, man. Uh, BHDV1. That's yeah. the one. Do you know how many of those I have out in the barn? At like eight of them because we had them for a film camp and Monfrotto's like, I'm like, can you send me a return label? They never sent me the return label. Really? So, yeah, oh got like God. eight. Of, I've had them wow. in there. I've had them in there for for years. I mean, I use them, but you yeah. Know, and then I bring them back to film camp every summer. But whatever. It, they're amazing. Oh. Uh, if you if yeah. they got gunked up, if the ball got gunked up, you'd have to like yeah. spray stuff in there. And it got to the point where I kept like a little bottle of oil gaff tape to one of the sections. Yeah. And if I was out and it, yeah. So anyway, uh, monopod. You know what I did? I, I replaced the uh, the head because the head doesn't pan, and I replaced it with the five hundred one, the Monfrotto mm. five hundred one. So I took the oh. old head off and I put the five hundred one on there so that I could do little pan moves as well. Just tell it's just saying. I I love I loved the the whole thing moving. I don't know yeah. why that was yeah. my favorite because yeah. the heads like sometimes loosen and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But the uh, that was I love that thing. I should get that back out. I wish it went down further. That always bothered me. You you doing this move right? You're doing one of these, and then it hits the end and won't. You know who killed it with the monopod was uh, Still Motion back in the day. Oh, they, that's they, right. Patrick and the and and the crew they were yep. kill they were killing it with that monopod because they would just go out and they would like there was no tripods in sight. Yeah. It was all DSLRs, and they would do all those little like you know those little push in moves and yep. everything. Uh, they killed it with that stuff. Yeah. They I were the hats off to them. Yep, yeah. for sure. It was like the right. gimbal before the gimbal. That's right. Um. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I footage. Alex sure. said it. I footage is killing it too with their monopods. Yeah. So monopods, but these days, I'm um, just kind of getting back to just good old fashioned handheld. Weighted mm. handheld is kind of what where I'm at right now. If it's not mm. on sticks or a, a, a slider or something, motion control, it's just like that that look. That you only get when you've got weight wrapped yeah. around a sensor. Yeah. Something about that just speaks to me. Yeah. So I can grab. It's funny that today's topic is today's topics because I've been working on this uh, XT3 guide. And today was like rig day trying to figure all that out. So um, the struggles are always monitoring audio and power. This mm. camera has one of the best monitoring in that when you turn info on over HDMI, you see exactly what's on your screen, which is surprisingly difficult to find. Um, you, what can I just, can I qualify that on the X-T3? Mm. It depends on the monitor, because if you're using it, a, 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 are you on the Shinobi or the Ninja 5? Uh, I have it on here, but I've been using um, the uh, a different monitor. I try to get more budget friendly stuff what, in there. But what resolution is your monitor? Uh, all 1080. 
that accept yeah. 4K inputs? Yeah, so if you use a 720 monitor, then it actually cuts off some of the output. Mm. And it's not the manufacturer's fault because there should be something inside of that Fuji camera that says it's yeah. 16 by 9, let's just scale it you know, um, to the resolution of the monitor we're pushing it to. But I oh, found so the that focus is getting funky. Well, it's just you, you lose some menus and stuff. You lose oh, some okay. of your display. So, and, but as soon as you put it onto a 1080 display, then you have full everything, like you're saying. So I'm just oh, okay. telling you it's a little bit of a gotcha, but yeah. Okay. There you go. Boom. Oh, yep. So let me see that rig, brother. Uh, right. <clears throat> so this is uh, what I've got right now. It's still mid mid process, but I'm going for that compact mm -hmm. oh, form sick. factor. So just like a nice little like perfectly weighted. And then uh, I'm toying with two different battery solutions. One is 40 bucks and it's like impossible. It takes forever to ship. But uh, in NASO, I think a N a S S O on Amazon, they make these plates, which I love. They're just MPF to whatever you want. Um, but they have a, th a hole right here and it kind of has a cheese plate. Mm. I should probably zoom in. Should, ah, whatever. It'll be fine. And uh, so it's it's not those crappy gray ones we all used to use. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, really nice. And it also has another one on the side. So you could run this to another device. Um, so are you powering the camera only on that? You're, or well, are you gonna this, this is the wrong cable. So I'm waiting right. for a, a dummy technically, battery. Technically, but technically, you could power a monitor and uh, like I have one of these for my black magic. It powers the camera and uh, um, a 1080p monitor. Wow. Um, you don't want to put a wimpy little battery on there. You want at least the 550 probably. Yeah, yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then a small rig cage. Um, and the way I set this one up, and I'm still tweaking it and things, but essentially um, I want to get... Is this what you were talking about, by the way, Ben? Let me put this right here in the middle. Sweet better. This no. guy? No, they did one specifically for... It, oh, it's okay. kind of got an arm, so it takes it off. Um, got it. So and I it, love it's got that a bracket thing. specific, for, but, it, but it's it's very similar functionality. It's it frictionless. It's got another, another, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, this has a, a lock on it, but you can leave it, you can adjust it so that it's, it's still got enough friction to hold it exactly mm. where you want it and move it around. It works in the same way, but it's just a slightly different form factor. Sure. So I love that thing, and I want to get one that's a NATO rail. Yeah. So that I could have maybe... No. So I'm going to do a NATO reel on the handle so that the monitor could mount to this handle. And by the mm -hmm. way, this is the handle designed for the red from mm -hmm. small rig. And I love it because it's so minimal, but it's got cheese plates on the front and the sides. And then mm. the knob is tiny and it's right here. It's not sticking out the front. Yeah. Um, is, that, is that on a NATO rail? Yeah, this is a NATO handle right here. Yeah. And the NATO rails right here. Got it. Mm -hmm. So the idea is the monitor is NATO on the handle. You can mm -hmm. dump the handle get rid of that real quick Ugh. so it's all toolless right it's really snug on yeah it. siri has there. great stuff by the way people are making comments about some different things and different rigs i love their monopod and uh solutions they're really good i'll have to check that out um so i want this to go on the nato got it mm -hmm. but it can also go on the handle so you can yeah. have a handle with take the handle off and your monitor disappears yeah. And then um, or you can have just the monitor like this or get rid of the monitor. And then I put um, there's two Arca Swisses here. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing just goes away. And yeah, so that's have... what, yeah. So how, how can you is there a way to use that battery based solution and the screen that's built into the X-T3 or is that the trade off? Yeah, you can. But then you're getting into like bulk, right? So mm -hmm. if you wanted to, if you didn't want an external monitor at all, you could put the plate on top uh, or got on it. the okay. side. But now you're getting you're getting wide or you're getting yep, tall. Yep. yep. So okay. I've always loved that. Like like this, it's, it's yep. all really compact. Yep. That's what sucks about the black magic is you got to rig it weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just so, so wide that thing. Yeah. So on the black magic, I took this plate and I put it this way. So instead of up and down. You did a horizontal. It's laying this way below yeah. the screen. And I use that little 15 millimeter block that Ben showed us. Yep. To get enough height 
so that you can still see the screen. Got it. So anyway, that's kind of usually how I roll something like more. You can build it up a little bit. So it's not like rails coming out to here and I'm doing this, you know, not one of those. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I can still kind of tear it down because some cameras like the GH5, it's just you really don't need much. So anyway, that's it for me. I'm just going to answer a question quickly. Yeah. From 360, do you use the solid pod with your C200? I do not, but I'm very seriously thinking about buying one. Mm. Have you used one, Gem? No, nope, not yet. Are you thinking about using one? Uh, I'd like to try it out. I mean, you know, that's the beauty of our show that's coming up and, and not teaching Monday through Thursday. It's to hang out with you guys and walk around and find some new kit. You know, I'm not interested. Okay. I, I'm still interested in getting kit in and creating content around it to help people figure out what kinds of things they want to do. But I'm getting to the point now where, you know, like all of us, myself and Caleb especially, um, we have so much stuff around us that is just a constant stream of, can I get this stuff out of here? You know, um, that from an actual production standpoint, I'm trying to just figure out what are the things that I'm going to use all of the time. I mean, right. I can't even tell you how in some ways hard it was for me to decide to get this XT3 because I had to really decide that I was going to use this thing all of the time. This was going to be a piece of kit that was going to be in rotation all of the time. A part of it is making yourself do that, but a big part of it is wanting to do that. It has to be a piece of kit that you like to use. And um, yeah, I, you know, thankfully, I'm very, very happy about um, very happy about that. Uh, Caleb, if you could do a link to the battery mount, that would be great. DTech Logic is asking for that. If you have uh, one right on. Awesome. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, so for me, it's simplifying, but then I, I kind of go, I think it's very similar to lighting. Um, we go through these phases, you know, where we are drawn to a certain style of lighting and we kind of sit with that style for a while. And then we see something that inspires us or we're like, you know, that's really lovely. Let me go ahead and start playing with and, and lighting a different way. And, and I think that that's kind of true to a certain degree about how you shoot or just sort of the evolution of what you gravitate to in terms of how you want to shoot or create movement in your frames. And so I'm as guilty as anybody for wanting to, you know, get gimbals and sliders and all kinds of things like that. But I think when it comes down to it, um, I gravitate most to uh, just handheld, whether that's a slightly bigger digital cinema camera or it's a, a smaller mirrorless kind of like the rig that you had. Uh, and I did an episode recently on rigging out the X-T3, which is different than your way, but kind of along those same lines, except for your battery solution is a, a little more compact than when I was doing Caleb. And, um, and then... And then also just really liking the look and feel of shoulder mounted footage to be on a rig like this. So I've gone through evolutions. I just wound up upgrading and I got the, um, the, you know, the mm. recoil, the recoil rig. Um, that's, a, you know, obviously the VCT base plates putting up a lot of that weight. Um, well, but can you show that again? Yeah. So this Sorry, is I missed the, it. This is just the oh, recoil rig. It. Yeah, so it's really, hold on, let me just get the VCT base plate away. That is so, that is a base plate, man. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but but this, you know, this this whole rig right here is really nice and it's really small and it, it you know, I, I like the size of it. It has a um, you know, airy style rosette here. It's got places for rods in the front, the bottom, it goes up and down, and it's got a nice big fat plate now. Um, you know, which is, which is nice with a, with a long travel path. So I'm pretty happy with this in terms of, um, you know, a shoulder mounted component, but the key for the castle for me, or key to the castle are these trigger grips, which are, um, you know, which are kind of the, the big part of this whole system in terms of being able to adjust and do that really easily. So you can basically put this into any rig that you're using. It doesn't have to be a Zakudo rig. And you are adjusting. And Shape has something similar to this. You know, wooden cameras making some stuff that's nice. But I just like how fast you can put a camera on your shoulder 
and you can adjust this to the angle that you want. Um, nice. So I think Egg that, right. yeah, I think that the trigger grips are a really, really nice piece of kit. And I do gravitate to sometimes shooting shoulder style, especially when you have those quick releases and you can put the camera down on the ground and get a shot from the ground, pop it back up, and then you can get it onto a tripod. So I like the versatility of doing that. Um, but it is big. And, and on the flip side, when I went down to Red Rock to do the recent project for Zeiss, um, I brought three cameras with me, but I only brought three cameras because two of them were the cameras that we had the bodice lenses on. I brought the X-T3 with my lenses for the BTS stuff. So that was in that little, you know, the little small rig cage. Um, I have some little handles that, that are on there. There's usually a handle on the top too. And, um, and I found that this little cage is working out really well. And then I'm usually using the small HD focus. Um, and I'm using that with a dummy battery solution and I'm powering from the monitor. Uh, and you don't even have to have the monitor on. In fact, now when I'm doing the live stream, that's what I'm using, but I don't have the focus on. I'm just using that Sony battery on the top to power the X-T3. Um, quick question for the community. Yes. Really quick. Um, yeah, go, has anyone go. here, has anyone here not heard of small rig? Uh, let us know. And if you haven't, this, you've heard it a billion times, but there's their website. Um, quick survey. Beauty... No, go ahead. Oh, and the beauty is like their, their cages are so cheap, right? Like you might as well just, I just pre-order it. It's always 50% off on, on pre-order when yeah. I buy the camera, right? Mm -hmm. We like said it last week. Uh, last week they had the A6400 pre-order cage for $33 US. Really? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I just wanted to throw no, that out No, you should if interrupt. People I have no uh, idea what the small rig business there's is. There's also a whole nother conversation going on because shiz nuts became shiz. And now there's a combination conversation. Should you go back to shiz nuts? Um, <laughs> I'll let you know. It did confuse me, to be honest. I'll be honest. It did. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, good. So <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> the things that people talk about. I'm going back in time here. Uh, let's just see any recommendations for the Canon 70D. I mean, I, you just have to be on the on the lookout for like those small rig things for DSLRs. It's you know, if mm. you're or to Amazon up, or Amazon, just yeah. search yeah. Amazon for camera cage, and there are yeah. so many crazy options out there now. But don't go I crazy. Have found, yeah. I have yeah. found that, that there are certain brands when you you're looking, and there's loads of stuff for nothing money, and or similar sorts of cash, I guess, to the small rig stuff. But I bought two of these. From different manufacturers for this and for the s yeah and this one is perfect which is the small rig one and the previous one didn't fit at all it was completely the wrong size mm. what it was advertised as mm. but it wasn't it was clearly built for it but they just designed it wrong and it, i must have ordered it in the first batch before people had started to review it so beware on that front that's the world we live in i just Brought a, a replacement glass jar for our blender. Same thing happened. Showed up. It was the wrong size. I'm just saying that's the Amazon life that we lead. Oh yeah, well, that was the thing. I, I I assumed that I'd ordered the wrong the wrong thing, or I'd been sent the wrong thing, but it wasn't. You went back and yeah. went, no, no, that's the right one. That's the right model for that camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't fit. So uh kyle is asking are we all going to do a meetup at nab um not officially i think we've all kind of decided that we're going to be on the floor and we want to hang out <laughs> every single night we're going to be on the floor yeah. <laughs> oh yeah we'll be on the floor a different <laughs> but we'll be on the show floor and i think we'll 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 do some social right guys and we'll say yes. we're over here Maybe if we head over to the beer garden between Central and South Hall, we'll say we're heading over to have a beer at the beer garden. Um, yeah. It's not really a garden, by the way. It's like a concrete slab of ass, but it's still okay. I mean, it's not great. <laughs> it's where all the uh, sexy satellite trucks are, though. It's great. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and there's less and less of them nowadays, those satellite trucks. Really? So small HD is outside. They tend to be inside and outside now because, you know, they play the high-knit, you know, monitor mm. thing. Uh, which is kind of interesting. So, um, 
I keep getting a lot of questions about the XT30 from Johnny D. And let's just talk about that for a second. So, Johnny, mm. I think if you're going to make an upgrade and you want to go into a mirrorless camera, it's not that the XT30 isn't a good choice of a camera. But if you're buying that camera for um, both stills and video, then I think you would be better served to save up a few more ducats and get an XT3 if you're looking at uh, Fuji because you have a longer record time in 4K. Um, you know, the, the body is weather sealed. It's a little bit more robust. And you're not paying a tremendous amount more money. We're talking hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you're just a still photographer that wants to upgrade to a camera, you want it to be very small and compact, you want the same image quality that you're getting out of that sensor on the X-T3, then yes, the X-T30. Um, but if you're truly looking at it as a camera that you're going to move into and use for video applications, um, then I would say X-T3 in the Fuji world right now. And just also understand that Caleb's not going to do an X-T30 camera course. He's going to do an X-T3 camera course. So you're going to have a whole opportunity to have uh, in-depth training on the camera as well. So um, that's my thoughts on that. So there you go. Any any thoughts from you guys on X-T30 versus um, X-T3? Um, probably, Caleb, you've had the most experience with Fuji uh, besides me. I, I pre-ordered the 30. Um, that's the only the only downside for me is the 10 minutes in 4K. Right. Um, but sometimes the larger body, some people will like the larger body. It does have headphone and microphone jack, right? Right. Yeah. It's a monster. So yeah. what is yeah. it? Three, four hundred? Are we four? Mm, I guess technically it's four hundred dollars less. Yeah. So if you can get a little flippy screeny action there, you're done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah yep so yeah. but great camera both yeah. of them are great and you're not going to be this off i mean we gotta just for a second fuji uh, what are you talking about man xc30 with that <laughs> it's just insane <laughs> yeah i mean let's be honest 900 dollars. i mean the the 6400 is a is a winner um, but when you're talking about a hybrid camera system where you want to take it out of the box and you want to get i mean i can't when I went down to Red Rock with this X-T3, it's like, let me just throw this thing into a Turna and put the dynamic range to 400% and like Bob's your uncle. Let's yeah. go. And, yeah. uh, and you know, it's just, it looks so good. Um, it's, it's really, it's really nice. Um, yeah. But not everybody feels that way, by the way. I just had a dinner with somebody who said, I can't get a good image out of, uh, you know, out of the, out of the Fuji camera. So what are you going to wow. do? Hmm. I, hey, it happens. Hmm. Do you find it really quick side note? Do you find it just sucks? Light is a yeah, light so, hog. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So, cause that's a is, big difference is, for me. There is no standard when it comes to ISO. Yeah. Uh, even though it's international, so whatever, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit. Let's just be honest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if you take a Sony a seven series camera and you set it to 1600 ISO, and you take a uh, Fujifilm X-T3 and you set it to 1600 ISO, it's like, don't tell me it's only a stop difference. It's ridiculously different. So how, how few Fuji rates their ISO compared to other camera companies is clearly different in some respects. Yeah. I don't know what it is. So I don't know if it's a light hog. I think it's how they rate their ISO. And the truth is that, um, pardon me, when you're using that camera, that you're not getting what you would expect out of a certain ISO if you were on another camera system. Is that kind of what you're talking about, Caleb? Kind of. Yeah, but it, it's not. It's it's all def. It's definitely the ISO. But um, I also feel like I'm cranking everything up, even like ISO and my lighting. I don't know. Yeah, but I, but I think but I think it's because how they rate their ISO is different. Right. And, Right, and but so I, I just where you, yeah, like if you think you're going to yeah. put your camera at 1600 to get the right exposure, you might actually be at 25 or 3200 right. or something else on the Fuji camera. Yeah, and so um, yeah, and yes, and Fuji would kill it if they made a nice cine only camera. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If they came out with a five thousand to seventy five hundred dollar camera. And we got mm. to bundle that with those MK, uh, what are they, the MKH? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the two lenses. The, the two lenses, which are like, mon 
those two lenses are ridiculous. I mean, those are. They I, are I wish I wish those lenses existed for Canon cameras. Yeah. In a, likewise. In a, do you think they'll do some primes? Because that would be hot as Hades as well. Oh, you're talking about for full frame? No, for if they did the well, well the MKs aren't full frame, right? No, but you're saying like a, I'm are, saying if they take that concept and they do primes. Yeah, but not primes like for their stills. You're talking about for yeah, like cinema video. super 35 primes with that, gear are com that are compact, just like those are. I would and love right it. Like, and take it'd be the like the new, pricing. They'd be like the new Vedras. Yeah, it'd be so good. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm getting excited. Okay, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're all just looking off into the distance. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I mean, good. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, yeah, there's times where we just start talking about stuff. Caleb and I were talking about storage earlier today, and it's like I'm like drooling. Like some of these conversations I'm having with uh, storage companies, and they're like, "Yeah, well, we had a concept for this, and I'm trying to sell it." I'm like, "I wish, I wish that existed." Um, and again, it really just boils down to not having too much kit. It's like so many bits and bobs. I'm so sick of how many cables we have to have and yeah. how many connectors yeah. and everything else. It's just so maddening when I when I pack for a job. And if you forget uh, one cable, you could be you could be down for the count, right, Ben? So right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and show you something without absolutely destroying everything. Uh, so I bought this thing because as well as you if you two are working more domestic now this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna leave it, I'll explain what it is. So I have a power bank, which has USB, uh, it's got seven USB ports and it's got three 220 or 110 volts sockets, which will fit EU, UK, US, Australian, I think Indian plugs all in this one thing. So you just get the end of it, you get a universal adapter to go on that end and it will work anywhere in the world and power all your stuff. Because I have this thing that I work a lot in the UK and I also work an awful lot in Europe. Yeah. So I have I have one of these little pouch type bags full of UK figure of eight leads. You call them something different in the States. You know the ones. They look like a little figure C14s. of eight. C14s. The C14. That's, that's, that's the if you're shopping on a, like an engineer's. Is that website. what they're called? <laughs> yeah. C14. Okay. So C14s. It's a bin right over there of them. Right. Okay. <laughs> So I have a bag full of UK ones and a bag full of Euro ones. I have no mm. US ones. Whereas mm. that thing, it kind of negates the need for it. It also means that when you get into a hotel room and it's got one plug socket a million miles away from the bed or your bedside table or the desk, which is often the case if you stay in older places, that kind of sorts out. So that's helped a lot with the amount of cabling that I'm needing to carry around. And because that's got six, I think, um, high output usb ports as well mm. i don't have to take all that stuff for, for charging power banks and phones i'm running the aperture um light off it at the moment so that thing's enormously useful for saving on space mm. which for me is always a huge thing so just a little tip and a bag full of dongles that's right part-time films absolutely and a bag full of dongles and the bag that harkens of... back to episode one two and three five, five dongles wow. deep Kevin, I will put I, I will put the link up in a second. I'll try and find it. Good. Um, so let's see what else we've got here from from. Uh, oh God, I'm not going there. I see some comments I don't want to acknowledge. Yeah, I saw that one as well. I kind of laughed and then felt bad for laughing. <laughs> um, I really think the Canon and Dual Pixel AF are about to get dethroned. Uh, Decon, uh, let's just be honest here. Uh, in some respects, they have been dethroned, and in other ones, they haven't. Um, Who are we I talking about? Uh, Canon. I mean, if mm. you just see what Fujifilm and Sony are doing right now with AF, um, the time has come. I mean, mm -hmm. is there the same finesse yet? Mm. Maybe That's not. That's the thing. That's the thing. Then I notice when you're filming on that and you go out of frame, it, it's pretty quick to back focus. Which is the yeah, and 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 there are and there are settings in here that are supposedly supposed that. to have that finesse, but they don't. It's right. just not like the Canon where you can really just sort of like set it so it yeah. feels a lot more natural. Um, but I do think that the actual AF system in some of these cameras has surpassed Canon. I mean, uh, I detect 
one of the mm. things that dual pixel AF is horrible at is somebody wearing glasses and a beard. Uh, yeah. That may change as it evolves, but um, but I have been finding, at least on the Fuji film, it's not having an issue with that. So I think it's getting it's getting it's getting to the point. Um, Sony, Sony, someone just did a test. Can Sony can handle eyes and glasses even if you're wearing polarized sunglasses? <laughs> I, I can't. Oh, they put a out. tiny person inside of that camera to be like, eh, got him. There he is. I'm just going to say to everybody, uh, whenever 360 grad posts, don't just start verbalizing what his comments are sometimes, <laughs> okay? Because you're going to get yourself into a whole world of hurt sometimes. It's funny <laughs> stuff, but you got to be careful. Don't start reading out one of his comments until you read it like three times. Um, <laughs> uh, unbelievable. <laughs> oh, amazing. Um the uh, apple way shiz the apple way I let me tell you comment. unbelievable I, <laughs> I, I was like i don't know what they're talking about but okay I you read found it, it. I found um, it now. unbelievable i mean um hey at least he's politically correct right okay so there we go um i do not have the new firmware for the updated autofocus uh, it's not out yet, Baron, and I am in no fast track to get uh, firmware updates faster from Fujifilm than anybody else, unfortunately. And that is with a line direct to Fujifilm, by the way. So it's not going to happen. So uh, I'm going to get it when everybody else gets it. So uh, we got to wait for to newer, faster, better lenses. That's right. So 358, we're going to wind down. I have a hard out at for my time here, guys. EVA2, wow. uh, hoping, yes, can we please have a body that doesn't shatter when you drop it from 30 inches off the ground? And yeah. let's get a real monitor on that sucker. Mm. But the picture's lovely, and it would be nice if Panasonic got into the game of some decent autofocus as well. I Gone are the yeah. days where we have this discussion about, oh, autofocus is not, you know, it, it's only for people who are not real filmmakers. You know, go F yourself. Um, yeah. We need it sometimes. I, I don't know where you've been, but when I'm in small to no crew and I am shooting by myself and I need to get good shots, if I know how my camera works and I can rely upon that autofocus system, uh, more power to me and to all of you. Uh, you know, it's going to take over kids these days who are shooting on everything autofocus. They're going to become cinematographers, shoot Netflix. And now, you know, yeah. everything's going to be auto. Yeah, sure. They'll figure out a yeah. way to do ma auto manual lenses. Oh, yeah. Slap a That's module weird. on your your cinema primes and zip phase auto detect. <laughs> Well, you know, the uh, Red Rock has technology which basically, you know, mm. can read distance and everything. So basically, mm. you'll you'll have autofocus with a built-in AC. Yeah. You know, and and, and uh, you know, and eventually the you know the the way you can tune your camera in terms of how long it ch changes focus will be so precise that you can say, you know, I want to do a whip pan and I want to snap into focus or I want to go ahead and just kind of float the camera and I want different things to come in and out of focus and you'll be able mm. to, so to do that, that already. So close. Yeah. 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 I'm excited. Um, we're going to have to come up with a new episode for topic for next week, uh, gentlemen, mm. and it's going to mm. be you, Ben. So um, we're going to have to talk about that. And we are getting awfully close to our pre NAB show, which will not be next Oof. week. I, I think we've got to get, uh, it can't be the Wednesday before the show, because Ben, you're going to be traveling potentially. Or I'm, I might be. be able to join you via my phone or something. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to be in LAX, I think, at that time. Because what time is it? Western. It's Pacific 3 p.m. 3 p.m. We do it on the West Coast. Right. I think mm. I land. I'm, I'm due to land at 4 p.m. So I'm going to be on. You know, we're, we're we're such freaking idiots. You should have just flown into Portland and hung out with us for two or three days, and then gone to NAB with me. But next time, we'll do that next year. Um, yeah, okay. I don't know why we didn't think of that. That's so stupid. Um, okay, so we got to think about a topic for next week. And then I think it, the only reason Wednesday before the show, Caleb, is good is because that's when we start to see some announcements. So we can really mm. start to talk about some stuff. But um, anybody else got yeah. anything they want to say? I don't Not think really. So. I guess I guess it's it's starting though, isn't it? Black Magic did their thing this week. Oh it's shit! We we should talk about. Yeah, not now. Yeah, no, we'll have to say that for next Black week. Magic, but they, well, yes. no, they brought out a new camera. They brought out. Oh yeah, right, bro. all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that rack I mean, mount. Yeah, I'm in Oregon. Yes, uh, but not Portland. I'm about an hour south. 
Uh, yeah, so we've got uh, Black Magic Raw, right, Caleb? Uh, dropped yep. like 30 seconds after you uploaded your episode on the on the pocket <laughs> camera. Ridiculous. After it finally they processed they've been, they've been sitting going, when is he going to get that fucking review out? Yeah, and then, we can, and then we can drop ridiculous. It. And then we've got a new uh, Ursa Mini Pro version 2, Gen 2 camera, yeah. uh, which is going to be interesting. I, I, You know, as much as they're going to get blasted and people are going to knock them, um, they have a place, you know, and at their price point. And I think that there's some really interesting things going on with Black Magic right now. So there are. And um, I mean, apparently, there's big things coming for Resolve at NAB too, which I'm excited about as a mm. big user of that software. Dude, so. Resolve. And, and that Ursa Mini Pro is the only camera under ten thousand dollars that you can literally. It's heavy, but it's the only camera you can literally take out of the box and shoulder mount and start shooting with it. It's that comfortable. Right. It really is. So uh, that there is reality. It's a, it's a good. It's a really good camera. It is. Four K, three hundred frames. I think. Yes. Right? Yeah. Three hundred. Uh, is it three hundred and four K? No. Is it three hundred and four K or an HD? It's three hundred and four K. I thought it was. I thought. So I thought too. it. Okay. Well, I know it's at least one twenty. I've, I've kind of I heard simmered. the three hundred soft. I heard the three hundred soft. Oh, okay. But you know, but but I heard the one twenty is good. But uh, mm. I think it's going to be exciting. Um, mm. Mm. List episodes. People said they uh, Deacon loves those list episodes. Oh, you mean mm. where we do the like the X number of lists. dollars thing? That is my guess. Mm. Okay. Two X crop. Got it. Three hundred HD. Right. All right. I was wrong. My bad. Okay. Okay, still pretty good. Okay, good. So, Ben, you got to come up with something. Send it to us by the end of the week. Yeah. Uh, as always, a pleasure to have everybody here. Uh, All thank eighty you. of you beautiful people. Yes, eighty-one, yeah. 81. and and over a hundred at one point. Alex, mm. thanks for coming. As always, Baron, Kyle, uh, pleasure to have all of you, ladies and gentlemen, at the show. Even you, three hundred and sixty. Uh, even you. Even you with your with your PC comments, <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, and and part time films got in, came back from the gym, and uh, you know I did feel inside of me like a sense of relaxation. You know I did calm yeah. down as soon as part time. I noticed came. that you were you were you were edgy earlier. I think shiz you calm down like that. Yeah. And Ben's amazing penny pinching. Shiz, I want to see a different name next week. Yeah. My amazing penny, but you need to add something. Juice. Okay. How about maybe Shiz will just be nuts next week? <laughs> he said next week he's going to be Shiz Nutter. <laughs> I think or something like that. So. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. It's been a yes. great week. Uh, great to see you guys. Love you all. And uh, we'll talk more next week. And hopefully we'll see some of you. Oh, oh we've got Woody in as well. It's, it's basically everyone from my hometown is in. Boom. Night. So Well, let's let's go to a pub at... Uh, at, at Hello, NAB. Woody. Hi, Jago. Yeah, well, Jay, Jago needs to get himself to NAB. That boy mm. needs to go. He'd love it. He keeps talking about it. And then he ends up sacking it off a month before. So get on it but yes yeah monday nice monday night at a pub in 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 vegas it sounds like oh we should we should there's, there's a great there's a really sunday night we should do that that there's a really good country and western bar which is hilarious in treasure mm -hmm. island we should do that, um, that and sunday, but you got to do it on sunday night i still want to go back to the yeah, pepper mill to their lounge and have a drink oh in the lounge. evening that that's with the fire it's amazing yeah, have you never done do that it. no yeah we got to do, do that and the okay. and part time films the pub at New York New York is actually pretty good. It's an Irish pub, but it's uh it's it's a fun it's a fun. Oh, pub. that's the one on the street. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, cool. that is good. Yeah. All right. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Have Take a good care. night. Good see to see you guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, live. Hello, live from still here. Are we still on? I think so. It uh -huh. says live. Um, Jim left, uh, and we're Jim still just, here. Just, Jim's just like bailed, and there's me and you left. So can neither of us turn this off? <laughs> uh, I think morning. if we all leave, I think if we all you leave, you guys gonna be watching my here. kids having breakfast in seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tempted to like leave a camera on and put like a sign here, or something for Jim. It's got a twenty thirty six hour. Well, uh, I'm going to hit the red hang up button and we'll see okay. what happens. Ben, Likewise. have yourself yeah. a good night.
<laughs> you too, mate. See Everybody, you bye bye. Love y'all. Bye bye. <laughs> no, mate. Bye bye. Good night. <laughs>